In this episode, Natalie Peskowski, NSH Project Coordinator, interviews Michelle Coker and Amanda Kelly, two histologists turned business majors. They discuss the business of histology, everything from workforce shortages to certification requirements to building a histology lab from the ground up. I'll now turn it over to Natalie. I'm here with Michelle Coker, the 2018 recipient of the Leica Leadership and Management Scholarship, and Amanda Kelly, the 2018 recipient of the Cancer Diagnostics Frank J. Monick Memorial Scholarship. Both of these women have used the funds from their scholarships to return to school to pursue degrees that will help them achieve their career goals. So Amanda and Michelle, can you guys tell us a little bit about your backgrounds, how you got into histology, and where you're currently working? This is Amanda. I can go first. I graduated from St. Louis University with a degree in biology, and I did research for many, many years, and then decided that, you know, I got tired of grant hopping from one grant to another grant, and I wanted something a little more steady. And I did, I performed histology, but I was also doing molecular and other things, and so I didn't know which direction to go, but I loved histology. And so I uh, decided to try with federal government to get a job with the United States Department of Agriculture, uh, which did not require at that time any kind of licensure, like to be a histotech. And so I got in as a histotech and met Herbert Skip Brown. And uh, he was my first big histology manager and introduced me to the NSH and MSA, the Missouri Society for Technology, and my life was born in histology, and I haven't gone back yet. So now I'm working for a company, uh, a startup. This is my third startup. I think I'm starting to get known for it as a startup histology queen. <laughs> this job is physician or pathologist who has multiple level uh, histology. So he's got a professional histology, you know, where he just signs out. And then he's got a histology lab, which I manage. So I manage all of his arrangements with professional groups and different hospitals, as well as uh, his laboratories. And my title now is director of operations. That's so exciting. Well, my, my truck is a little bit different. I had a very winding road. I didn't have the money to go to school right out of high school. We weren't very well off. And so I actually joined the military and I was a medic in the army for three years and then decided I did not want a career in the military. And so when I got out, I worked at a plasma center for a while. <laughs> And at that time, I became a phlebotomist, I and mean, I was the phlebotomy supervisor. That is one thing I always seem to gravitate towards the leadership positions, just, just in my nature, I suppose. So after working there for a while, I started my family, and I was staying at home with my kiddos, and sadly, uh, their father got laid off. So I had to go back to work, and the job that I found was actually at a hospital. I worked in the intake area as a phlebotomist and assessment processor. And so at this point, I actually had about 60 hours worth of credits. And so they moved me back to histology as a lab assistant. So that's where I got my histology start. And I went through the certificate program that they have at Harford Community College and obtained my HT license there. So I'm currently working on actually a bachelor's. I haven't finished yet. More than halfway there at this point. So that's what I'm using the scholarship funds for is to finish up a bachelor's. And I'm actually going the management route just because it, it is my passion. I'm working on that online through the University of Texas at Permian Basin. So Very cool. I know there's a lot of people who actually got into histology from the Army. Dave Davis was doing his interview uh, last week, and he mentioned that he started out in the Army as well. So it sounds like you guys have a little bit in common. You both worked your way up to supervisory roles, and you're now pursuing degrees in management to support those roles. So what made you guys decide that additional degree was really necessary? I guess I'll start first this time. I've always wanted to finish school. Life's just gotten in the way for me several times. Uh, a couple years ago, my kids started going away to school, and I thought, you know, it's time for me to go ahead and do this. And at the same time, I was fortunate enough to get a position as manager of compliance in a small pathology group here in Austin. Actually, it's a large pathology group here in Austin. And so I manage all of their CLIA labs. I actually would like to continue on after I finish my bachelor's to go ahead and get my master's because in this organization, we have some, some director and CEO level positions. And 
you know, eventually those people will be retiring and I'm hopeful to be able to take on the, one of those roles as they move on to retirement. Okay, for me, I was stuck in a rut for years. You know, either I was a supervisor or a manager. And I couldn't break into the director role. And when I did, it was for a very short time. And I needed that master's. Like I said, I am queen of the startup. So I end up having to try to decide how to expand a lab from virtually nothing. And so I've done that traditionally twice. This is my third one, but this one's not from nothing. It was a part-time job that the doctor decided to make a full-time job. So that was easier than when I was at the Durham Pass Center. When I was at the Durham Pass Center, I had nothing. It was concrete and dreams is what I called it. <laughs> and, and literally, I had to put every piece of instruments in there. We had to validate everything that was in there. Brand new, absolutely everything. I had no control, so I had to uh, use store-bought controls. Thank God for for some of our vendors and the vendor relationships I made at NSH because I needed absolutely all of them. For me, I needed the money background. I did not know how to do the finance and the accounting that I needed to start something new. So, uh, and then I also needed to know a little bit more about the regulatory than what I was getting just from histology because now I needed to find out what the sewer district, is, you know, wanted and what our local people, I mean, we knew on some level, but I didn't know all the permits and stuff that I would need for, for business licenses and things like that. Cause I was never, you know, I was never privy to that information. And so the only way I could get that was to, to get a MBA. And so that's what, what made me decide to do it. And then, gosh darn it, as soon as I decided I was going to get myself settled, here I am in another startup. But that's okay. You know, it's exciting and it's always a new challenge. I just can't tell you the number of challenges that you have when something is brand new and nothing is built. So that means you've got to build it. And all the contacts that I have, technical people that I've met throughout the years, I couldn't have done it without all of those people that I met through through NSH and my local MSH society and then all the vendors I met. It, I just could not have done it without without them. Yeah, the wow. networking that is provided by the organizations that we're involved with, with our state societies and with the National Society of Histotechnology really provide just a wealth of mentors and resources, I think. I know I lean heavily on a lot of my mentors when I have something, a new project that I'm working on, or I have a question about why something's not quite working right. On that topic, Amanda, you recently went with a couple of mentees to the ASCLS Legislative Symposium in Washington, D.C.? Sarah and Megan were the recipients of a new scholarship to get young professionals involved in advocacy with NSH. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yes. I am so glad that NSH is doing this. I can't tell you how proud I am of our society for doing this because most associations have the opportunity to represent their people. The CAP represents the physicians, and we just didn't have a voice. This allowed the voice of the everyday histotech to come out and for our federal legislators to actually hear from us. The two uh, young ladies, Megan and Sarah, were wonderful. They had an awesome time. And everybody that came had an opportunity to meet with an intern. You know, they want to hear from you. They want to hear your personal stories. They want to know how this legislation is affecting you because then they can go back and explain it to their senators all like this is personal to them and to where they live. So I'm really, really hoping that more people decide they want to come along next year because the bigger our force, the bigger our voice sounds on Capitol Hill. What are some of the specific issues you guys talked about with the senators? We talked about the workforce shortages. The workforce shortage is it's bigger in some areas and in other areas. Like for my state, Missouri, our workforce shortages are in the rural areas. We just don't have anybody. And uh, we have no schools in Missouri. So we have no pathway for people to move up. So we have to grow our own crops is what I call it, where we have to get our own people 
and hire them in as lab assistants. And so I look at them as lab assistants and then try to see how much science background they have. And if they've got enough science background, then I can work with it to eventually turn them into tech. I literally interview them about being a tech when they're in their initial interview. It seems like that might be one of the reasons that going back to school like you guys have done is pretty common among the gastologists. And since there is the shortage and they come in, do on-the-job training or have their associates, and then they decide mid-career to go back for their bachelor's or master's. Do you think the field is trending towards requiring more degrees and certifications? Absolutely. That's another reason that I decided to go back for my bachelor's because I feel like eventually it's going to be a requirement. And while it may not be now, I feel like eventually it will be. We're already at a point where signing up to take the HT exam is requiring the education component. So, you know, anyone that's new to the field is already going to be required to have that education piece. And I think those of us who came in prior to that requirement are going to see that if we don't, eventually we're going to get left behind. I agree with you, Michelle. I also believe that colleges are giving you the base, but they're not giving people the actual practical they need to be able to do it. So I eventually see a middle level technical college that that will actually teach you the practical things that you need. Like you, you may have your degree but you may not have the opportunity to get practical to be able to, to be a histotech or to be a med tech, you know, or the coding to be an IT person. So I see these huge gaps in the actual working knowledge versus school knowledge. So you have all these well-educated people that can't break into where they want to break into because they have to get a job in order to break into what they want to do. And they can't find the lower level jobs that they need to break into the field. And it's just a shame. I I really wish I could start a technical college that could just teach what you need to get there. You know, especially me as a hiring person, see all these talented people that I can't push over the finish line because they don't have the practical experience. Yeah, that's something we get the question a lot about people who are trying to go the route that requires a year of laboratory experience, but they can't get that lab experience because they don't have their certification or they don't have the requirements that they need to even get the job in the first place. Yeah, if the society ever wanted to really do something special, I think it would be, you know, have certificates in embedding and certificates in this where You could just do all day embedding, all day cutting. In conjunction with the career day, you could have a higher level one for people that are graduating college that want to have some practical experience where they could at least come out with a certificate. Because Lee Luna did that many, many moons ago through Armed Forces Institute of Histology. You could take a whole week of histology. We cut, we trained, we did everything. And that's what USGA sent me to so that I could get my practical experience so that when I went back, I could literally start cutting in a lab. So I think if we could give them that gap, that might help a lot of people make that leap. We're always looking to fill those gaps in histology education. That's what NSH is here for. So maybe we should look into that. So thank you to Amanda and Michelle for taking the time to share your stories with us today. I just have one last question for you. What would your advice be to the next generation of histotechs who are interested in keeping up with their education? I would tell them that you're always worth it. Most organizations are no longer paying for you to go to symposiums and conventions and uh, things like that, workshops, formal education. They're just not investing in their employees in that way anymore. And I would say that you are worth it. So always invest in yourself and always keep learning and always keep expanding your skills because by doing that, you keep yourself relevant in this field and the field is constantly changing and advancing and we have to keep up with that sort of thing just like a pathologist would. It takes a lot of time. So basically, you know, school right now is my hobby. Um, And, you know, the one thing I can say is, you know, I love what I do and so it makes it that much easier to to put the time and effort into this. It makes investing the time much, much easier for me. Keeping up is just important. If you don't keep up, the world will just pass you by like you're standing still. Believe me, I've been there and uh, it's an ugly feeling 
definitely <laughs> stay up with the National Society for Institute Technology. Keep up with your state societies. And I also think if you don't have your associates, plug into your local community college. Make sure that you've got just the basic classes that you need to be a histotech because that's updated all the time. When it changes for other people and you don't have that extra chemistry course and you don't have the transcript, then you won't be able to do some of those things and you'll be wondering, well, why can't I do that? And that's because you haven't kept up with your basic biology and chemistry classes that change from year to year. So that's the biggest thing I recommend people to do. Thank you both for being here with us today and sharing your stories. To our audience, if you're interested in funds for continuing education, don't forget to apply for one of NSH's professional scholarships, like the Leica Leadership and Management Scholarship or the Cancer Diagnostics Frank J. Monick Scholarship. The deadline to apply is May 31st.